What if I told you that the world's largest battery company just announced batteries that cost as low as $10 per kilowatt hour? Not 100, 10. That's like going from paying for a luxury car to buying a bicycle. And the kicker? They're not using some exotic new chemistry. They're using salt. Yes, it's basically the same stuff that's sitting on your kitchen table. But here's where it gets weird. CATL makes more lithium batteries than anyone else on the planet. They're literally winning the lithium game. So why are they suddenly pivoting to technology that's been considered second rate for decades? The thing is, they're being mysteriously quiet about how they achieved this breakthrough. No technical papers, no detailed explanations, just bold claims and two new products ready to hit the market. So is this the real deal that changes everything? Or are we just looking at tech hype? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Incogni. Let me introduce you to CATL's new sodium battery pack, Nextra. If you don't know CATL, they're the battery company that powers Tesla, Mercedes-Benz, and pretty much half the EVs on the planet. So when the king of lithium batteries suddenly starts pushing sodium, it's like McDonald's suddenly announcing it's selling pizza. People notice. So here's the thing. Sodium batteries have always been the underdog. They're less energy dense and have shorter lifespans. And despite salt being literally everywhere, the batteries cost a fortune. You know how those contradictions go. Most of the planet is covered by water, but people still shell out for luxury bottles of it. Unlike cases of melted glaciers though, CATL claims that the Naxter battery can be purchased for cheap, costing as low as $10 per kilowatt hour. And the entire industry has been desperately trying to hit $100 per kilowatt hour. Back in 2008, lithium batteries cost a staggering $1,415 per kilowatt hour. We spent 16 years clawing our way down to 115 per kilowatt hour in 2024. That's when EVs become as cheap as gas cars and home batteries become affordable for normal humans. We just barely crossed that finish line after a decade and a half of work and CATL just lapped us nine times. So how did CATL pull this off? And what does it mean for your next car or home battery backup? Because cheaper batteries could change everything, like storing solar power to keeping your Netflix running during blackouts. I mean, priorities, right? To understand why this matters, let's quickly cover how sodium batteries work. Now we've talked about sodium batteries and CATL's sodium tech before, so I'll keep this very brief. Both sodium and lithium batteries work the same basic way. You've got two electrodes, think of them as parking garages for ions, now, when you charge the battery, sodium ions shuttle from one electrode to the other, storing energy in the process. When you need the energy, the ions shuttle back, releasing power to run your devices. But here's where sodium gets interesting. These batteries are much safer than lithium. They're way less likely to catch fire or explode. If you've ever worried about your phone overheating or seen those news stories about EV fires, sodium just doesn't have the same temper. Now, you might wonder why we aren't all using sodium if it's safer and literally made from seawater. Well, sodium has real drawbacks. It stores less energy per pound and doesn't last as many charge cycles, which is not ideal when you're powering an EV or trying to keep your house running all night for year after year. Now, the real kicker though, is that sodium is about a thousand times more common than lithium. We have literal oceans of the stuff, yet somehow sodium batteries have stayed expensive, even as lithium plummeted 92% from $1,415 to $115 per kilowatt hour over the last 16 years. Sodium just couldn't compete. Manufacturing quirks and efficiency issues meant that despite cheap materials, the final product cost just too much. So if everyone was struggling to hit that magic $100 per kilowatt hour target, how did CATL suddenly achieve $10? And should we believe it? Let's dig into what makes Naxter different. But before we reveal CATL's secret sauce, or should I say secret salt, let's talk about something else that's been piling up where it shouldn't, your personal data. While CATL is using salt to store energy, data brokers are storing your information and selling it to the highest bidder. Well, today's sponsor Incogni can help you get to the source of the problem and restore some of your privacy. Data brokers make a business out of collecting your personal details and selling access to it. And sometimes they sell your info to some pretty shady people. Incogni can help you with this. We have the right to request that data brokers delete our information, but it takes a lot of time and effort, and sometimes legal action. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and then just sat back and relaxed. They also just released a brand new tool called Custom Removals for Subscribers to their Unlimited Plan that's really cool. It allows you to flag an unlimited number of sites where your data is exposed. Couldn't be easier. If you wanna take some of the control back around who has access to your personal information, give Incogni a try. 
Take your personal data back with Incogni. Use code UNDECIDED at the link below and get 60% off an annual plan. Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now let's see if CATL's claims are worth their salt. So let's start with the Nextra battery pack. Actually, there are two versions of Nextra. The first one rolling off the production lines will be the 24 volt heavy duty truck integrated start-stop battery, followed by one designed for passenger EVs. And both share the same core technology, but are each optimized for different applications. Now the temperature performance is where sodium really flexes. Both Nextra versions operate from negative 40 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius, which is about negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. That completely redefines what we expect from battery temperature limits. And they retain 90% of their usable power at those Arctic temperatures. This matters more than you might think. CATL and other Chinese manufacturers have extra incentive here. China's northern provinces border Siberia and experience Siberian level cold, making them historically unfriendly to EVs. There are also substantial markets in neighboring Russia and Mongolia that need affordable, cold resistant electric vehicles. It's not just about making batteries that work in winter, it's about opening up entire regions to electrification. But temperature resistance is just the beginning. CATL claims that Naxtra can last for over 10,000 charge cycles, with the heavy duty version capable of starting after sitting idle for an entire year. That's not just impressive, it's paradigm shifting. So let me put those numbers in context. Tesla's LFP batteries typically last around 3,000 to 4,000 charge cycles before the capacity degrades below that 80% threshold. That's when your 363 mile range drops to something like 255 miles. It's still very usable, but it's noticeable. As a general rule, after about 200,000 miles, average battery capacity degrades about 15%. But if Naxter really delivers 10,000 cycles, we're talking about something like 3.6 million miles of theoretical driving before dropping below 85% capacity. That's not a car battery anymore, that's infrastructure. Now that's a battery worth its salt. Performance-wise, Naxtra gets surprisingly close to current lithium technology. According to the Southern China Morning Post, Naxtra achieves an energy density of 175 watt-hours per kilogram. That's remarkably close to the 185 watt-hours per kilogram of an average EV lithium iron phosphate battery. Yes, it's still very much behind premium nickel-based lithium batteries that hit 250 to 300 watt-hours per kilogram, but it's competitive with LFP batteries that already power millions of vehicles. CATL says this translates to about a 500 kilometer or 310 mile driving range on a single charge. That covers the vast majority of daily driving needs, especially for urban and suburban use cases where most EVs spend their time. Naxtra isn't CATL's only sodium offering. They've also developed Freevoy, which we discussed briefly before. Freevoy takes an entirely different approach by combining two battery chemistries in one pack. Think of it as a hybrid, but for batteries. Freevoy comes in three configurations, classic LFP, high performance nickel manganese cobalt, and now sodium ion. Each chemistry brings its own strengths, and Freevoy's power management system intelligently switches between whatever pairing you have based on the conditions and needs. Since launching in October of 2024, Freevoy has evolved beyond just slapping two battery types together. CATL has optimized the interaction between the chemistries, and they've carefully defined cell ratios and arranged them in specific mixed, serial, and parallel connections. This optimization alone improves the temperature range by 5%. Here's where it gets clever. The system uses the sodium side as a state of charge benchmark to assist and calibrate the lithium ion battery's charge level. According to CATL, this improves the overall system efficiency and adds over 10 kilometers to the pure electric range. And the real value proposition is addressing lithium's weaknesses with sodium strengths. Cold weather performance? Well, sodium handles it. Need maximum range for a road trip? Switch to lithium. City driving in extreme heat? Back to the sodium. It's choosing the right tool for each job. More importantly, if you're somewhere cold where lithium tends to struggle, have no fear. Sodium is here. Now for the reality check. These advancements sound fantastic. So what's the catch? First, lithium still holds advantages in energy density and surprisingly, cost. And despite sodium being more abundant, current market dynamics still favor lithium. The technology is more mature, the supply chains are established, and the economies of scale are already in play. The timing is particularly challenging. After dropping 92% from that $1,400 per kilowatt hour to the $115 today, lithium prices have plummeted another 70% just in the past three years due to oversupply. We're talking about batteries that cost less than a tenth of what they did 
16 years ago getting even cheaper. This price crash has weakened sodium's economic argument considerably. Why switch to a new technology when the old one just got much cheaper? The frustrating part is that while CATL has shared impressive technical specs, it's been noticeably tight-lipped on actual pricing. That claimed $10 per kilowatt hour figure would be revolutionary if it's true. But without concrete pricing for real products, skepticism is warranted. We've seen too many battery breakthroughs evaporate when they hit market realities. The lack of technical explanation is equally concerning. How exactly did CATL achieve such a dramatic cost reduction? What manufacturing innovations made this possible? The company isn't providing many details. That's either strategic secrecy or strategic vagueness. A Stanford study from January 2025 highlighted another challenge. When or even if sodium batteries will become truly cost competitive remains highly uncertain. The technology faces a classic catch-22. It needs scale to achieve promised costs, but it needs low costs to achieve scale. As battery chemist Dan Steingart from Columbia University noted in a February 2025 science article, sodium battery manufacturers are still too small to benefit from economies of scale. The entire industry would need to pivot, and that kind of change doesn't happen overnight. But that's exactly what CATL is trying to change here. So where does this leave sodium batteries on the NASA technology readiness scale? Despite the challenges, Nextra is genuinely an eight or a nine. It's flight proven and ready for market. This isn't theoretical. CATL has been producing sodium batteries for several years, though not at scale. Yes, there have been obstacles, and CATL originally promised to have sodium supply chains established by 2023. It wasn't until earlier this year that they achieved this, causing significant production delays. But mass production is now a reality. And the manufacturing component of the story is crucial here. Sodium cells use nearly identical production processes to lithium ion cells. This means CATL and others can convert existing production lines rather than building from scratch. That's a massive advantage for scaling quickly. Freeboy also rates an eight or nine on the readiness scale. This isn't speculation. 30 different vehicle models from brands like Geely, Cherry, GAC, and Voya are scheduled to launch with Freeboy batteries this year. These aren't concept cars, they're production vehicles. And the market position matters too. CATL already commands about 38% of global EV battery installations, with their batteries powering over 18 million vehicles worldwide. The company works with industry giants from Tesla to Mercedes-Benz. When CATL announces a new technology, the industry doesn't just listen, it prepares to adopt. CATL's CEO, Robin Zhang, made his vision clear months ago, stating that sodium could capture up to half the battery market. Coming from the leader of the world's largest battery company, that's not idle speculation, but a roadmap. If that $10 per kilowatt hour figure proves real, we're looking at a fundamental shift. EVs could not only reach price parity with gas cars ahead of schedule, but blow right past them. Home energy storage could become standard rather than luxury. Grid scale storage could explode. In a good way, it's a poor choice of words. Even if reality lands closer to that 40 to $50 per kilowatt hour, that's still transformative. At those prices, batteries become cheap enough to deploy everywhere. The economics of renewable energy completely change when storage is affordable. The real test is this year. Will those 30 announced models actually ship? Will consumers trust new battery chemistry? Will the economics work out as promised? We're about to find out. Now, one thing seems certain, the battery landscape is diversifying. Lithium won't disappear, but it might not dominate forever. You could say the industry is experiencing a real sea change. And for consumers, competition usually means better products at lower prices. But what do you think? Would you buy a sodium-powered EV if it saved you thousands? Or are the slightly lower specs just a non-starter? Jump in the comments and let me know. And over on Patreon, I've got an extended version of this video with even more salty details. And a big welcome to new producers, Howard and Kevin. If you'd like to join, the link's in the description. And be sure to listen to my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll keep this conversation going. Keep your mind open, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.